So Demo Night is my absolute favorite. Hands down, it's the best part of this process. Demo Night is a chance for them to show what they've learned over the six months, a chance for them to shine, to tap into all of the adrenaline that has built up over the six months, to present themselves, their company, and what they've learned. It's electric. It's absolutely extraordinary. You can feel in the room the, the trust in the future of the country, the trust in the future of the economy. Demo Night is a nerve-wracking experience. Let me just give you a picture of what's happening that night. 300 people sitting in the audience. You are presenting in the best theater in Southern Hemisphere. This is where Game of Thrones in Australia was premiered. There's been so much hard work, blood, sweat, and tears into all these 10 companies. We remember what they were like at the beginning or when they first pitched to us as part of the selection process. And it's always one of my most proudest moments is watching them stand on the stage and looking at how far they've come. I'm going to tell you now, if you're not there for the tech rehearsals, I will not put you on the stage on the night. They're going to have two huge burdens to work with. One is the, the stage fright and the difficulty of standing up in front of that many people. And the other one is the weight of the consequences of this for their business. That's the final stage, the final hurdle for them to get out and to be able to be business leaders and represent not only their companies, but the future of Australia. Without this program, students would be missing out on the exciting opportunity to increase their knowledge and understanding in the STEM areas, as well as learning. Let's take a photo of us with it. So Cube Rider came in as a young team, young entrepreneurs with a big vision, and they just want to run the company together. What they've learned about different roles and how they need to work with each other and manage each other has been challenging. And this can be the social media. They one. both shared responsibility for everything. Huh? And we challenged them early on to say, as you grow, you won't be able to do everything. You're gonna have a team of hundreds of people. You're gonna to need to be able to lead and delegate and manage. And that starts with you two. And they started dividing responsibilities. So Solange stepped forward as CEO. Um, that was a confronting moment. It was probably the best choice to make. But I'm not going to say that it was easy because, you know, you start this up and it's your baby. And, um, you know, you want to lead it. And to an extent, I, you know, I still do lead it. I mean, as a co-founder, your job is a leader of the company. I think that part of you, you know, you might feel a bit upset by it, but the other part of you has to realize that it doesn't mean the person that becomes CEO gets the right just to you know, boss you around. You know, they're not your boss. You know, you're still a team and you're still working together for the same results and goals. We are definitely sort of two beings sharing this experience, I think. We're not really just two trains on parallel tracks. I think we both really invested in what we've created. And because of that, we're by default invested in each other. And I've seen that. I've spent a horrible morning again. Why? Demo night stuff. Let's go and have a hot chocolate or something. Okay. When nice. I get back. Okay. I was really lucky this meeting though. Good luck. You should still feel like you're part of a team and you know you're both the leaders of this amazing, awesome company that you're starting. But at the end of the day, you're still one of the heads of a, a company that could potentially be, you know, life-changing for a lot of people, and that's really special. I think this is a brilliant starting point for my journey 
as an entrepreneur, and I think I'm gonna continue doing this for the rest of my life. Hey guys, how are we? One of the biggest problems with Uprise is we've got this mental health product and mental health is kind of unsexy. No, nobody wants to strike up a conversation about depression um, because it's depressing. Engagement, that's a really broad construct. Yeah. What I'm concerned about We've got a team of eight really smart people trying to fix this problem that I don't think anyone else has been able to fix yet, which is like, how do you rebrand mental health so people are okay with it? If we can figure out what's going in to that recipe and turn it into something that makes it easy for people to talk about mental health, then that's really interesting. I have no idea how we're going to do it, but it feels like we're heading in the right direction of something. So Nathan is one of our engineers. He's an excellent guy. He's basically... Oh, <laughs> He's basically helped us make a lot of the space software. Actually, he's done the majority of it. It's running really slowly. You know, the power surge from the experiment is causing other experiments to be knocked out. And we've got to make sure that that never, ever happens. The Skype call with Nanorax was basically a, to see if we had passed all of the testing or not. And unfortunately, we didn't. That really sucked for me. Um, I think I took it a bit worse than Solange did. Yeah, that means we didn't get to make our launch for June, unfortunately. Um, I guess a big learning for me, personal learning, is that, you know, sometimes, no matter how hard you try, you sort of, you know, you have to just accept what happens. So if we go to um, timer.py. We're going to kill it this time. We're going to make sure that there is absolutely not a single problem with the software or the hardware or the operational side or anything to make sure that this launch goes ahead smoothly. I think it should be fairly straightforward, yeah, because um, it's, it's stuff that we've done before. Um, we've just improved the last uh, version of the board that was made, so and we're not going to get any surprises. We decided to basically go and do a high altitude balloon launch, and it's going to be collecting data for the students. It'll be like a mini version of what we're ultimately planning to do, which is in space. Button, so I'm the balloon like, flies up to about 30 kilometers into the atmosphere, and it looks like you're actually in space. Um, but really, you're in this thing called the stratosphere. On like, when it's night outside. Like, Even though this isn't the launch into space, this is kind of like proof that we will get there soon. We think it's going to be a really, really good thing for the school students. And we've actually received a lot of positive feedback where schools are really excited because this will be kind of like a taster before they actually go out and do the real thing in November. signed a contract on, with Maccas on Friday for 30 stores. Right. And the 30 stores, they average 200 deliveries a week each. And we're making a dollar of delivery. Yep. And we have 30 stores. It's been an exciting couple of weeks, the last few weeks, and uh, it's been lead, led by our sort of focus on business development. And we've got quite a few stores that have come on board, particularly in the Sydney Eastern Suburbs. Uh, we signed a contract with McDonald's last week and um, we're, we're, we've got some great opportunities coming up in the next couple of weeks as well. So we've got the momentum. It's now just a matter of closing out these deals, uh, getting drivers on the road, 
uh, getting them recognised on the road, so getting some branding and awareness out there of what we can do and what we can offer, and just providing the best possible service we can. You can go for a walk. Just, absolutely. Cool. Demo night in two weeks. Are you ready? You happy with it? <laughs> so we've been working with uh, Jay and the Uprise team. I wouldn't be being a good CEO if I was totally happy with everything. <laughs> it's been really interesting. Their challenge from day one was they, were they took on a topic which people in general don't want to uh, openly talk about. In, 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 in a sense, it's, it's around mental health. Uh, and mental health in the workplace. Well, that's just the other thing, as I've realised, it's probably not HR. You know, HR Jay and his team are actively working, it seems, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, to move their business forward. And sometimes they need a voice of support, um, a voice of reason, and sometimes even just someone to bounce things off, even though they probably know the answers. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that we've got it within us to be able to be a backbone mental health structure within an organisation. Because at the moment, there's not anyone else out there that I've seen that's evidence-based in the way that we are. Mental health is something that is has the potential to cripple your organisation. It's often unseen and unknown. So watching Jay provide a business around a topic like mental health has been really interesting. It's not one that is easy to approach corporates with. It's not one that's easy to approach really any business around because it's one thing that people, it's not they want to ignore, it's just they they fear what it means to uh, to actually address it. Talent. Right from the start, it's been good uh, being on the ride with Johnny. There's definitely a bit of yin and yang sort of going on there. I don't think our, our logo will ever be another colour. You know, Johnny and I doing a bit of a, a, a two-man show this time. We, it's the first time on, on us. We've done it many times before, but not necessarily on the, uh, the big stage, so to speak. The rule of thumb is one person pitching. If you have two people pitching, there's opportunity for disasters between the two. Someone says the wrong thing. There's awkwardness back and forth. It also just, it just makes things a little bit harder. And when you're pitching, you want one great, amazing story which is going to knock the audience's socks off. Can't wait for this to finish. <laughs> Six months. Well, cheers to that. Cheers to that. The first time I ever came across the name Steve Finale, uh, was in a funeral booklet of a close friend of mine in the chapel at St Joseph's College. He's good too. We actually met a long time ago without really knowing that we met. Uh, I had a nephew, um, his name's Bowen, who unfortunately took his own life when he was uh, 16, uh, quite a few years ago now. They were, and uh, believe it or not, Johnny and, and Bowen went to school together. Like, I can't believe that there's that connection there. Like, it's... And, you know, it makes you think about stuff and it makes you think, my God, like, there's, there's something, you know, there's got to be something else out there that um, puts, brings people together. I feel like that initial introduction meant that we should have we should have met you know there was some sort of destiny to it all but it all comes down to it the connection with the that we have is very strong um i think it will always be strong it doesn't matter if yellow conquers the world or or if it doesn't it doesn't really matter um because we'll always have a really strong connection we'll always be very well um you know we'll always be great mates um and yeah i think that we've we've um, almost got Bowen to thank for that after all this time.
demo night is an extraordinary moment. You have a huge opportunity, but what that obviously means is you've got to work for it. So you've got to put your pitch practice in. You've got to make sure that you know, you've really thought how you're going to present. So what's the difference in terms of the content thus far compared um, with last week? I, I think I want... Demo night, they're going to be scared. Um, not just scared because they think that investors might be in the audience. And there are some fairly important people in that audience, but rather because of the fact that it's the last time as a group, as a cohort, that all the teams are together representing what they have built over the course of the last six months. And uh, I think for them, it will be the moment where they, they stand out on their own. As part of picking up the CEO role, I had to pick up the spokesperson role, which is interesting because I'm not the best public speaker and so definitely is a good public speaker. Solange needs to sort of learn how to do it because both of us need those presentation skills. Um, and she hasn't had the opportunity to really pitch in front of a big crowd before, so I'm happy sort of giving that to her. Um, but I would, uh, you know, I'd like to do it because it would just be a fun thing to do, I think. You are passionate about what you're doing. You're passionate about the kids. Focus on things that you're passionate about. Don't worry about the delivery I can help you with. But the delivery I feel will like be... I am a lost cause when you're it comes not, to this delivery. You're not, you're not, you're not. The delivery I can help you with, but I can only help you when you're comfortable with what you're saying. So let's talk about today's kids. Let's talk about their future. Let's talk about their education. I'm not the only person in the audience. It's something we have a right to. It's something that everyone should have access to. Don't cross your legs. And it's something that I believe is a very fundamental part of society. You're beginning to speed up, slow down. Soul just needs to be comfortable about being in front of an audience, being under all the lights, um, and feeling what she feels about her company. She's passionate about Cube Rider. She's passionate about teaching children to become rocket scientists. That's what we need to get out of her, and that's what I hope to see on stage at Demo Night. I'm really proud of what the Alor Foxes team have done, which has been brave enough to take the step back and go, is this really what we want? I would say 90% of my thoughts and energy are going to getting ready for demo day, which is really hard because we're at such a pivotal time in our business where we need to start really shaping it. And actually now for the first time, I feel a bit scared. <laughs> Your child. <laughs> and you know, we have to hand in a one pager this week about business and what it stands for, and I'm like, I've actually got no idea. Like, I know what it stands for now. I know what it stands for, but I don't know what it looks like. And so there's a bit of panic that comes with that. We're getting closer. Like, we've been doing tests the last couple of weeks to try different things. We've done bigger, um, more collaborative family projects. Like, um, the one that we did was building a billy cart. So we had three families do it. and. Um, they loved it. Mm -hmm. It was really loved cute. It. Loved it. Um, so then you started buying people time together. Exactly. Exactly. And that's kind of what we want to do. So if I look at the character of Ella Foxes, I see people that have got a drive, they have got tenacity, they've got an ability to get up and go. It's not easy to be an entrepreneur. Um, it's costly to be an entrepreneur, both time, money, uh, human capital, relationships, uh, you know, often I see all of these being affected with someone trying to achieve what is essentially a dream. The characteristics will always come down to internal fortitude, yeah. the guts to have a go, the guts to keep going, and the guts to get up when, when things aren't going well. I've got lots of people supporting me and hopefully, you know, no, we will get there. We will stand up and present something awesome and I think it will be I know it will be a lot stronger as a result. Can you find Olga and let her know she needs to be in the theatre now? Again, photo? Yeah. 
So uh, here we are at Demo Day. Who's uh, pretty excited? Woo! Tonight's your night. Be really proud of how far you've come, what you've done. Those 10,000 tiny steps, they all have mattered. We do expect the theatre itself to be packed with, with 300 people. And in the audience, we have every single major uh, venture capital fund. There are multi-millionaires sitting in this audience. There are people who have run companies and exited from companies. They've got a great deal of cash behind them. They are interested in seeing what the future of this country can do. So absolutely, we're talking about multiple millions of dollars available to the teams today. And there's so many connections that can be made to even more money. So that's really what's important about the nights like tomorrow. One, two, three.